Hello class, my name is Jim Brakebill and I will be your online instructor for FIRO 58, Fire Service Hydraulics and Water Supply. Um, I want to take you through uh, the course and show you some specifics about the course and then help you navigate uh, through the course. So to access the course, you've got to go to your dashboard and you find that right over here on the left side of your um, screen. You click on dashboard and this is what you're going to see and you're going to find your course here. Okay, and then to open the course, you're going to click on the course. All right, one of the things that I want to bring your attention to is you are going to have to set up your student profile if you want to continue to be enrolled in this class. So if you look at the left hand side, you're going to see at the very top in the green stripe will be account. So you can see my little picture here. So you click on account and then you're going to go to settings. And then you're going to um, click on, you're going to look here and make sure that all your settings are the way you want it. You can register some of your devices here if you want. All right, if you want to edit the settings, you click edit settings. And then you can edit the settings here. So you can see you, you have control of your display name. All right, and you can set the time zone. You're going to update your settings. Then the next thing I want you to do is go to profile. Click on profile, and this is where you can edit your profile. So click on edit profile, and then type a short bio uh, biography of yourself. And then you need to upload a face, a current face picture. So click on the pencil here, okay, and then you can uh, take a picture of yourself and upload it. So you click on the picture, and then you can take a picture, and then you hit save, and then you can move it and put it right in the picture slot on your profile. When you get done, uh, if you have any links, you know, like a Facebook page, um, you could put in your links here and then hit save profile. All right, to access your student email on Canvas, it's over here on the green. So the first one's account, second one's dashboard, third one is all the courses you're aligned in, okay, or enrolled in. This is your calendar tab, and this is your inbox. All right, when you click on inbox, that's where you will receive all your email notifications from me or any other students. So when you click on inbox, you're going to leave the course of the canvas. You're going to leave it. So see what happens? Boom. And then here's my inbox. And you get to pick, like you can pick um, your course. All right. And the only course that you're going to have, if this is the only class, will be this course. All right. And then to send an email, just click up here, compose a new message. And then you can hit right here and it tells you you want to send it to all the students the teachers okay or the various course sections if you're in more than one course or you can send it to an individual student by um, clicking on the um, this tab right here and searching for the names hit your subject type in your your message and then hit send and it comes to me or whoever you address it to all right, so now I've got to go back into the course because I've exited the course. So I go back up to my dashboard. Now I'm going to go back into the course. All right, so this is the course toolbar. All right, and this is the canvas toolbar. So on the course toolbar, all right, you're going to hit home. And you're going to notice that it's going to bring you to the to your home page and on the home page you're going to see the the three most recent course announcements and then you're going to see an introduction to the page i mean to the course it tells you how to access the course okay some successful tips i'm not going to read it to you but you need to go through here and read because it's vital information to access the actual course content, okay, you click on the fire hydrant, 
and then it gets into modules. Okay, now the class is divided into modules. Okay, and you can consider Canvas like a textbook, and each module is a chapter. This class has five modules assigned to it. All right, and within each module are what they call pages. So the first module you have to go through is called getting started. Now the biggest mistake students make in an online class is they skip the getting started module. And when they do that, they miss a lot of important information that they will need in order to successfully complete the class. So I, again, I urge every student in an online class, particularly in fire technology, to go through every page in the getting started uh, module. So you click on like meet your instructor. All right, it gives you a, a little biography of me. And then down at the bottom now, notice you're gonna turn the page. So you're gonna hit next. And then he, you'll get a short uh, introduction to Canvas. Turn the page again, and you're going to get this video to show you how to navigate through this class. All right, and then you're going to hit Next. And then it gives you a little short video on, you know, get your fire, uh, start your fire career at Copper Mountain College. All right, then you hit the next, hit the next button, and then it gives you some course information about the courses. And I want to draw your attention to the red here. All right, you have to stay active in an online course in accordance with the California State Education Code. If you do not respond to course announcements, you do not submit work on or before the due date, or you do not start the course, you know, immediately when it is open, then um, the instructor may drop you for um, lack of course participation. So please um, be active in this course. Act active in the course is defined as checking the course announcements and your Copper Mountain student email daily. Sometimes Daily is defined in, in my definition of daily is one to three times a day. Okay, and submitting all coursework on or before the due date. You'll find that here in the attendance um, policy. So please pay attention here to the red. Failure to participate in this course on a daily basis will result in students being dropped from the course and will receive an F for the semester grade. Once again, daily participation is defined as checking your email and your course announcements anywhere from one to three times daily and submitting all coursework on or before the due dates. Okay, I go down, I turn the page. Here is our um, college policy on plagiarism and cheating. Get down to the bottom, turn the page. This is on academic integrity and, and the definition of it. I do want to advise all students on an online course that most state universities, colleges, and community colleges use a variety of plagiarism uh, programs to detect students plagiarizing. And what it does is it's a huge database of all of the written work, okay, and all the periodicals and textbooks ever written on the subject and all student assignments that have been submitted. It'll tell the instructor um, which paper or which textbook you um, receive, you copied information from. It'll give the name of the textbook, the page and the paragraph of the textbook or the periodical or the name of the student, okay, that you copied from. Even if you cut and paste from one student's um, discussion post into your discussion post, Verisite's going to detect it. If you have a score of 5% or higher, you'll be dropped from the class for plagiarism, okay? Because it gives us a percent of what work has been plagiarized. Next, I have some uh, netiquette guidelines. All right, and turn the page. Next is our discussion board policy. 
Okay, I want you to understand on the discussion board, there are two due dates. The first due date is for you, the student, to post your reply to the initial prompt. The second due date is the due date for you to respond to two other students' replies with meaningful feedback. Now, when I say write on a discussion board, this is where all students will be learning from each other. What I mean by that is you have to write at the collegiate level, all right, and write enough uh, communication, write enough in your discussion, all right, to convince the reader that you are the subject matter expert. If you just simply submit a couple of paragraphs, or if you submit one paragraph, or if you simply just answer questions, you're going to get an F on that discussion post. And again, okay, the requirement is you have to write, and I mean a substantial amount of writing, to the collegiate level to show the reader and convince the reader that you are the subject matter expert on whatever that discussion topic is. Discussions will not only be graded on the accuracy of your information, but it will be graded on how well your written communication skills are. All right, so if you don't use paragraphs, you don't use periods, you misspell words, you have the wrong syntax, you don't capitalize nouns or the beginning of each sentence, your grades will be uh, lowered in accordance with the rubric that's assigned to each discussion. All right, it's vitally important that people that are entering the fire service today, all right, know how to write, okay, accurate reports and write, okay, to the collegiate level. There is nothing worse than being on a witness stand and having the plaintiff's attorney tear your report apart because there's a lot of misspelled words, punctuation's wrong, and it's written like somebody that was in the fourth grade. You don't ever want to put yourself in that situation. So yes, discussions will be graded very hard. Okay, they're, fifth, they're worth 15% of your overall grade. All right, turn the page. This is the textbook, okay? A lot of you, okay, should have already had the textbook. Even if they didn't have it in the um, bookstore, you could have went to ifsta.org and ordered it online like I did, and I had it within two days. So this is the textbook, all right? A bookstore has told me that they, they have it. It'll be in Monday or Tuesday, or you can order it directly from ifsta.org. The textbook is required for this class. All of the lectures and the quizzes and the exams come right out of the textbook and the course lectures. If you fail to buy the textbook and make sure it's the third edition, not the second edition, all right, you're setting yourself up for failure. This is the required textbook. Turn the page. Here are some successful learning strategies. Take some time to read it. All right, this little video shows you how to use Zoom. We'll be doing a lot of virtual class meetings. I will be taking roll call, okay, on the Zoom meetings, okay? And the, the roll call will um, be recorded under class participation. So this is why it's imperative that you check the course announcements and your Copper Mountain College student email on a daily basis. Next is some resources that will help you throughout the semester. We have tutoring, we have the library, we have computers in the library, we've got printers in the library. It's all contained on this page right here. A wealth of resources to help you get through the summer semester. All right, I also have a link here um, to the library. Just click on the librarian right here and it'll take you right to the library's page and you can access the Learning Center and other valuable resources that the, that the library has to offer. All right, the first day check-in. This is your first assignment. Basically, it's a discussion, and you're asked to introduce yourself to the class. So here's the prompt, okay? Please introduce yourself to the class. Notice the first due date right here, Tuesday, June 16th. Okay, that's the second day of the semester, again, because California State Education Code mandates that online students must complete 
a substantial amount of work during the first couple of days in class in order to remain enrolled in an online class. So this is what I want in your introduction. All right, and here is the second due date. Okay, this is the due date where you have to reply to two other students' introductions with meaningful comments and welcoming comments. All right, there are two due dates. If you miss one or both due dates, every due date you miss, it's five points deducted. There's only 10 points for each discussion. Okay, so please make sure you pay close attention to the due dates. Again, I repeat myself because every semester I get students calling me, I submitted my discussion before Thursday, June 18th, and I get in there and look. Yeah, they submitted it all right, but that's why they only got five points because they missed the due date for their initial um, reply. Next is um, the student form. This is where you can uh, post questions to the class, get some help. Um, it posts any issues or concerns you may have. You simply click on the reply, like here, and start typing away. It's a text box. And when you get done, just hit post reply. And then anybody that reads your, your uh, post can reply to it. All right, next is the uh, written assignment for the class. All right, because this is an accelerated class and it's a class geared more toward um, active duty firemen, this paper will only be one page to a page and a half. And it's called a reflections paper. And the reason it's called a reflection paper is because I want you to write in the paper what you learned in the class and how this class will help you advance in your career or increase the knowledge if you're already in the fire service. All right, that's it. A page to a page and a half. All right, and it's worth 15% uh, of your overall grade. Here is the due date, and you um, have to submit it right here, submit assignment. You're gonna have to submit it through Verisite, and it's, it'll check it for plagiarism, and it'll give you an overall score. You get to see your score, by the way, before you submit it. All right, now we get into module one. So let me uh, go back to modules. So I walked you through the getting started module. I walked you through the paper. All right, now we're right here. There are four modules of work that need to be done. There's a total of five modules, but there's four modules that you have to um, complete the classwork in. Okay, I'm not gonna go through all four modules. I'm only gonna walk you through one module. All right, so you can see how it's laid out. So you click on chapter one, and it starts off with the learning objectives. When you get done with the learning objectives, you're gonna click on the reading assignment, and you're gonna read chapter one, pages three through 11. When you get done with that, you hit next, or you turn the page. Here's your homework assignment. And read the directions, because if you do not submit the homework assignment in the required format, you'll get a zero. All right, please answer the seven chapter review questions on page 11. Then you'll submit them through Canvas and I will grade them. All right, here's the rubric if you wanna know how the paper will be graded. So if you wanna get an A on the paper, okay, this is the content of the paper and this is the command of the English language. Okay, total of 20 points. Next is the lecture. All right, the lectures are recorded. So you're simply going to click on the lecture. All right, and then you're going to hit so blow up the screen. And, and then here's the lecture. You can kick back and, and listen to the lecture. After completing this lesson, to get out of here, to hit the escape button. Okay, and, and then just the um, hit the next button. The all right, then I, I gave you a copy of the PowerPoint, which had the notes in it. Next, I put together a detailed study guide for you so you do not have to take notes during the lecture. Click on the word study. Okay, it's gonna open up 
and here's your study guide, complete with the learning objectives. And then I took all the notes. I put in the review questions for you as well. All right, so these are study guides to help you study so you don't have to sit there and take notes during the lecture. All right, to get out of the study guide and move on, just hit the back arrow and then go down and hit next. These, next, you'll have a bunch of training videos on using water as an extinguishing agent. A lot of the quiz questions and the module exam questions uh, come out of the videos as well. So if you choose not to watch the videos, you'll probably be missing some information that could help you successfully pass the exams. All right, then hit next. Then here's your first discussion board assignment. All right, so here's the prompt. Okay, discuss the physical characteristics of water and how it is used as an extinguishing agent. All right, so here's the first due date, Sunday, June 21st by 1159. All right, you, these three items here, okay, are just thought-provoking pro statements that help you get to thinking about what you want to write in your discussion. All right, remember, you have to write your discussion in a way such that it convinces the reader that you are the subject matter expert on using water as an extinguishing agent on a fire. You're free to use information out of Chapter 1. You're also free to use any outside periodicals, and you're free to use information that's out there on the internet. All right, all I ask is that you don't plagiarize. There is a grading rubric, and if you want to see the grading rubric, what you do is go up here to the three dots, hit show rubric. Okay, you expand the rubric, move the rubric up here, Okay, and this is how your discussion posts are graded. So getting the grade, getting 10 points, is completely up to you. But like I said, if you miss the first due date, you get this right here. You could, get, you could miss the first due date, and you could get an outstanding down here, so you only got five points. All right, there is no, uh, because this is an accelerated class, uh, there is no going back and opening up assignments because you're fall because you're you're falling behind in class. All right, you have to stay focused on this class. There's just not enough time to keep going back and reopening assignments. If you cannot manage your time effectively, you might want to consider another career in the fire other than the fire service. All right, so this is the rubric on how your discussion posts are graded. And if you look, here is the second due date by Thursday, June 25th, 2020. Okay, so one due date to, uh, for, you, for you, the student, to post is Sunday, June 21st. And then for you, the student, to reply to two other of your classmates' posts with meaningful um, suggestions, comments, etc., is by June 25th. Okay, next is a review of what you learned in the chapter. Okay, so these are, I always go back and give you some key points to remember. And then next is the chapter quiz. Now, the chapter quiz is not taken online. So read the directions, all right? And then for this quiz, you're going to click on the fire hydrant. Okay, and here is the quiz. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to print this out. And it even tells you what page the answers are on. All right, so you're going to take this. When you get it completed, there's no time limit. When you get it completed, then I want you to scan it back in as a PDF file and upload it. Okay, to get out of this, you're going to hit the back arrow. Okay, now on the student version, up here it'll say upload assignment. And that's where you're going, when wherever you stored your PDF version of the completed quiz on your computer, you're going to click 
upload and it's going to tell you upload what document and you're going to take that quiz okay you're going to upload it and you're going to submit it on canvas and i will grade it okay and it says it's due no later than june 25th if you have any questions you can go back and listen to this instructional video or you can give me a call okay next we go right into chapter two and it's the same layout again I, I want to go back to modules because people will ask, when are the assignments due? Well, this is a summer class, so the due dates are a little different. For module one, everything, every assignment, that's chapters one through four, okay, and the, and the module exam are due on or before June 25th, 2020. So it's going to be up to the individual student to manage their own time and make sure all of the assignments for module one have been submitted on or before June 25th of 2020. If you go down here and look, every assignment in module one has the same due date. All right, I wanna caution you, do not wait until the last minute to submit assignments because you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a substandard grade and I'm gonna to have to drop you from the class. Okay, each module, okay, is spread out throughout the semester, summer semester, 11 days. So each module is 11 days in length. So when you go down and you look at module two, looky here, see, see this module one ends June 25th, module two starts on June 26th and goes through July 6th and every assignment in module five through nine in module two will be due on June 6th. Okay, you go down to module three. Okay, you can see the midterm is also due on July 6th. So then you start module three and it goes from July 8th, okay, through July 17th. And every assignment is due by July 17th. And it, so this is how the coursework is laid out. I do, I do have some IFSTA instructional videos in here. And let me see right here. Let's go to chapter nine, just so I can show you how to access it. So whenever you see an IFSTA training video, like this one's on fire streams, you're gonna click, it on, click on the link. Okay, I'm, and then you're gonna click on the movie image and you gotta give it a minute to start. And then the training video, if you wanna to go to full screen, just hit the two arrows at the bottom of your screen and it'll go to full screen. Okay, to get out of it, just hit the escape button and then hit the backward arrow. All right, I'm gonna go back to the home page and uh, I want to show you, uh, if you want to review the announcements that have been sent out, click on announcements and you'll get to see all of the announcements that were sent out, okay, uh, in case you've missed an announcement. Because remember, the home page is only going to show you the top three recent. To access the course syllabus, you're going to click on the word syllabus. You're going to view and print a copy of the course syllabus. Click on the signage above, which is right here. You'll click on and you'll get a copy of the course syllabus that you can um, print out. If you want to enlarge it, here it is. So you can print it out or you can leave it and read it online. So th this is the contract between the student and the college and the instructor. So you can see um, right down here, these are important dates. It tells you when stuff is due. It has the attendance policy, my drop policy, discussion board policy, how the grades are weighted, assignment due dates. There will be no late assignments uh, accepted because this is an accelerated class. 
and then you have the due dates for each module. All right, to get out of this is you just simply hit the back arrow. One thing I like about Canvas is it gives you a snapshot of when all the assignments are due. So see here, here's module one, chapters one through four. Here's module two, okay, due um, July 6th. So every assignment that you see highlighted here, all of it is due by July 6th. Here's module three, all due by July 17th, on or before. You can always work ahead in this class, but you can never fall behind. Okay, you got uh, the reflections paper is due on July 27th. And then you have module four, which is chapters 13 through 15, due on Tuesday, July 28th. And then you have your course uh, final exam, which is due by July 30th of 2020. Okay, the entire class or the course on Canvas will be open to you. So you can work ahead. I've had students finish this class in about a week and a half. So you can work as far ahead as you want, okay, as long as you get your assignments turned in on or before the due date. Now, if you submit your assignments way before the due date and I grade them and you do not like the grade, you have a chance to go back and fix it so you can earn a better grade as long as it's before the due date. Once the due date has passed, the grade stays. So it's a way of rewarding the students that are working ahead in class. Okay, so that is a quick overview on how to navigate through um, Canvas. Again, this is the Canvas toolbar, and this is, okay, the class toolbar, or the course toolbar. So discussions, you click on discussions and it takes you to all the discussions. Okay, you can see all the discussions right here. All right, if you wanna see your grades, you click on the grade tab. I see the grade book, but you'll, you'll see your individual grade. All right, to get back to the toolbar, just click up here on the course. And then you'll see um, Confer Zoom. You could chat back and forth to other students in the class. And then you have the Greenleaf um, Library, the link. So with that being said, this was a quick overview on, on how to navigate through the FIRO 58 class in the summer. Once again, this is the home page. The top of the home page will always have the mo the, the, the um, most recent three course announcements. And then um, it gives you a little summary of the class. To, to get to the actual coursework, okay, how to access the course, just click on the little fire hydrant down here. If you have any questions, okay, please feel free to contact me at jbreakbill at cmccd.edu or feel free to call me at area code 760-835-7165. That is my cell phone. I am available to students pretty much 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right, I wanna thank you for enrolling in the summer class and hopefully um, we'll make you better pump operators. All right, thank you and I'll see you throughout the course in our Zoom meetings.